Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well. In today's video, we're going to learn how to create a custom snack bar in Flutterflow. So without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, as you can see, we're in our Flutterflow editor and I've set up a simple base UI. To get started, we'll first create some app states. Let's navigate to the app state page. First, I'll create an app state called message with a field type of string. Next, I'll create another app state named color with the field type color. Finally, I'll create an app state called show snack bar with a field type of Boolean. Once that's done, let's head back to the page editor to continue. Let's create a snack bar component. Start by building a new component named snack bar. Then add a container with a row inside it, followed by a text widget in the row to display messages. Remove any fixed height or width from the container. Set the row's main axis size to minimum and add some padding for a neat look. Round the container's corners with a radius of 24. Set a base color for both the container and text. And link the container's color to the color app state and the text to the message app state. Now, head to the main page, add a stack widget as the parent of your widget tree if you haven't already, and insert the snack bar component into the stack. Align it to the middle bottom, add a sweet padding of 50. Now let's add some animations to our snack bar component to make it come to life. Head to the snack bar component and select the container. Go to the animation properties and click on action trigger. First, add a fade animation. No need to tweak anything, just keep the default settings. Next, add another animation, this time a slide animation. Set the vertical slide with the initial position at 50, then enable apply same duration and delay to keep things synced. Once that's done, click preview and check if the animations look smooth and work as expected. Now, let's set up the trigger for the animations to make our snack bar functional. Select the snack bar component, then set the trigger to on initialization. Add an action, search for widget animation, and select it. Choose the container where we just configured the animations. Next, add a delay action. In my case, I'm setting it to 1000 milliseconds. After that, copy the previous widget animation action, paste it below, and change the animation action type from start animation to reverse animation. Finally, update the app state. Choose the show snack bar field, set it to false, and select rebuild all pages for the update type. And that's it, the animation trigger is now all set. Now let's head back to the main page and add a button to trigger the snack bar. I'll name mine show snack bar, but feel free to name yours whatever you like. Next, set the button's on tap action. Add an action and search for update app state. Select the fields, message, color, and show snack bar. Now configure the fields for message, type any text you'd like the snack bar to display. For color, pick any color that suits your design. For show snack bar, set it to true. Finally, set the update type to rebuild all pages. And just like that, your snack bar trigger is ready. Finally, let's set up the conditional visibility for the snack bar component. Select the component and configure a single condition. For the first value, choose show snack bar from the app state and for the second value, set it to true. Hit confirm, and that's it. Your snack bar is ready to display based on the condition. Now, let's boot into test mode to see it in action. In test mode, click on the show snack bar button, and as you can see, the snack bar pops up perfectly. I've also added another button to test multiple triggers. And there you go, both buttons are working flawlessly. That's it for this tutorial, folks. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Don't forget to drop your topic requests in the comments below. See you next time.